Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is Tuesday, May 12th, and we are have a short week, so it's only today, Wednesday, and Thursday, because Friday we have a day off. So we are doing a short version of a unit, but it actually works out really, really well, because it is just a little bit of like an extension of what we did last week. So last week we learned patterns one and pattern two, and this week we're gonna learn pattern three, and it's a very, very small addition. There's gonna be two videos that go along with today, okay? So I'm gonna share my screen and let's get to the notes. If you don't have your notebook out yet, take it out. Remember, you can always pause the video and you can go get what you need so that you don't miss anything. We are on unit seven, it's called pattern three. And this is the last pattern we will learn of the five total that uses action verbs. So next week after this, we're gonna learn about a whole different kind of verb, um, but it's one that you're gonna be, you're really familiar with. We use all the time in English. We just don't really think about the name for it. So last pattern for action verbs, and it's a pattern three, and it's gonna look very similar to patterns one and two, just with one addition, okay? so. Today we'll talk about labeling and parsing and our jobs, and then tomorrow we'll have a short video on diagramming. Um, actually, you know what? I think I might do all the notes today because we have a short week. I just thought about that. Okay. Pattern three. So, a pattern one sentence has one noun outside of the prepositional phrase. A pattern two sentence has two nouns outside of the prepositional phrase. A pattern three sentence has three nouns outside of the prepositional phrase follows the exact same pattern, okay? It is noun, action verb, noun, noun. And it has, like I said, a verb and three nouns. The first one is our subject. We know this already. Two nouns come after the verb. The indirect object comes first, so it like kind of slides in between the verb and the direct object. And the indirect object is the noun or pronoun receiving the direct object. And this might sound wonky until you actually see an example and then you're like, oh, that makes sense. And then the direct object is the second noun after the verb. The direct object will always be the last noun, okay? And what's really, really important is a sentence cannot have an indirect object. It can't have something receiving the direct object if you don't have a direct object because it just, that doesn't make any sense. You can't give somebody nothing, okay? So let's look at our example. Jeff passed the other player the soccer ball. Jeff passed the other player the soccer ball. Okay, the verb in here is passed. Who or what passed? Jeff. Jeff passed what? The ball. To whom? Who received the ball? The player, okay? So we have Jeff past, player, and ball. And if you look directly up at our pattern here and following these, what we have here and what I just said out loud, subject is our first noun, action verb, direct object, and then indirect object. So what I just said was Jeff passed what? The ball. Logically, that just makes sense. You can't pass a player, like you can't throw a play over to somebody else. Doesn't make sense. Jeff passed what? The ball. To whom? Player. The indirect object. It's indirectly receiving that verb. So it's receiving the direct object. I'm gonna do a quick example on the document camera in the next video that it's like my favorite way to think of this, okay? It makes it, I think, a little easier. So just like um, nouns can do the job of subject and object of the preposition, and direct object, they can also do the job of indirect object, okay? So nouns can actually do four things right now. They can do object of the preposition, subject, direct object, and indirect object. There's one more a noun can do, and that's next week. Um, the exact same process as before, nothing has changed. Now you just need to be able to identify that other noun that's not in a prepositional phrase, okay? Let's do a quick couple examples. My dad made Will a sandwich for lunch. Let us label. Dad, Will, sandwich, lunch. All right, which dad? My dad. Which Will? No answer. Which sandwich? A. Which lunch? Oh, no answer. 
Now let's do our prepositional phrases. For is a preposition. For lunch is a prepositional phrase. The only word we have left is made. That is our action verb. And then you want to look at the nouns. Nouns and verbs. And um, you're going to circle those. Dad, Will, sandwich. Dad, what did dad do? Dad made. Dad made what? A sandwich. For whom? Will. Okay? Remember, we don't use that one because it's in a prepositional phrase. Uh, remember, English is really strict on word order. And so your direct object and your indirect object, they're never going to switch places. It doesn't work. It does, it's like dividing by zero in math class. It doesn't work. It doesn't have, it doesn't, it, you just can't do it. Okay? So they're going to follow this strict order. Knowing that order, I want you to try to do number two on your own. Pause the video, see if you can label number two, and then we're going to go over it. Pause the video now, and it is time for us to go over it. Mrs. Johnson has a proper noun with wing. Yes. Problems, homework. Cool. Which Mrs. Johnson? No answer. Which class? The class. Which problems? Uh, pen and math. Which homework? No answer. Uh, any prepositional phrases? Yes, for homework. And then what did Mrs. Johnson do? She assigned. So, Mrs. Johnson, class, problem, homework, and get rid of that one. So Mrs. Johnson is our subject, class is our indirect object, and problems is our direct object. Mrs. Johnson assigned what problems? To whom? The class. Who received those problems? The class did. All right, same thing we did for number two. I want you to do, to do for number three. I want you to go over it, pause the video, label it, and try to figure out the subject, the indirect object, and the direct object. Okay. Uh, evening. Bed. Mom. Kaylee. Book. All right. Which evening? The evening. Which bed? No answer. Which mom? No answer. Which Kaylee? No. Which book? Oh, a book. And now we're going to do prepositions. In is always a preposition. So in the evening is a prepositional phrase. Uh, any other? Oh, before is a preposition. Before bed is a prepositional phrase. Mom, what does mom do? She reads. And then always is always an adverb. Now let us circle our nouns. Evening, bed, mom, Kaylee, book. And remember, these jobs cannot be in a prepositional phrase. Once you've gotten your prepositional phrase, you can throw them away. So now we know that mom is the subject. What does mom do? She reads. Mom reads what? Book. To whom? Kaylee. All right. Um, I'm getting a bunch of messages, so I'm going to stop this share. Tomorrow, we are going to do um, notes. Actually, I'm just going to pause right now. Hold on. All right, let's keep going. Sorry about that. Got a bunch of messages via Gchat. Us teachers are working all the time. Okay. So, um, because we have fewer days this week, I am just going to pop in and do diagramming really quickly. Um, and it's not a huge change. Diagramming pattern three sentences is, same thing, patterns, a noun, verb, noun, noun. We use the exact same diagram as we did for pattern two sentences. We just add one new thing. So here's our example. Tomas paid the mechanic $200 for the new tires. Subject, verb, direct object, and this is our new thing. We have this indirect object. It looks kind of like a prepositional phrase, except for this tail. This tail is important for you to see that that is not a prepositional phrase because nothing's gonna go on this line right here. You're only just kind of giving yourself another baseline just giving yourself more space. And the reason we put it here is that the indirect object always goes in between the direct object and the verb, okay? So we call it a broken dog leg, which is like the darkest thing ever, but that's just what our stuff calls it. That's what our grammar books call it. Um, but we use a broken dog leg underneath the verb for the indirect object. That's just how they diagram it. So what, uh, what is our verb? Paid. Who or what paid? Tomas. Tomas paid what? What did he pay? He paid 200 or he paid dollars. To whom? Who received those dollars? 
the mechanic, okay? That's the only thing that we're adding is just this indirect object spot, this broken dog leg with this little tail. <laughs> Ms. Jensen calls it a bone shard, which I think is super dark, but also kind of funny. So, <laughs> uh, but I also have a dog, so it makes me sad. Ms. Jensen loves dogs too, but it's a way to think about like, that's why it's a broken dog leg, is it's a bone shard, it's just sticking out. Sorry if that's dark, okay? Um, so an example sentence number one, I, brought my, I bought my friend a gift for her birthday. Um, what is my verb? Bought, who or what bought? I bought, what did I buy? You did not buy your friend, you bought a gift. For whom? See this broken dog leg right here? See this bone shard? That's where your friend is gonna go. And then my friend, and then I bought her a gift for her birthday. Okay, remember this, I'm going through this quickly, so please pause at any time. Example sentence number two. We have, my grandpa passed me the stuffing at Thanksgiving dinner. Here's our diagram. What is our verb, passed? Who or what passed? Grandpa. Grandpa passed what? Stuffing to whom? Me. Which, uh, my grandpa passed the stuffing when? At Thanksgiving dinner. So this is describing when it happened. That's why it's not describing the stuffing. It goes underneath past because it's when it happened it, or when it was passed, it was passed at Thanksgiving dinner. Okay, so that's it for um, our formal notes. And uh, I put on your schedule, day two of notes would be tomorrow. I figure it was easier just to get it done, done all today. Um, and our unique schedule is that you're doing exercise two tonight. Okay, and there'll be pattern two and three sentences on exercise two. So you have to figure out which is which, which ones have an indirect object. And then your homework tomorrow night is going to be pattern or exercise three, and we are not gonna take the test, okay? So um, email me with questions and I will, I'll, I'll record another little video tomorrow, um, just kind of reminding you of some things and check out my second video today about um, indirect objects. It's a short one, okay? I'm using a document camera. All right, uh, I'll see you guys here tomorrow. Bye.